Now it won't have escaped your notice that Chad and I have spent a fair amount of time recently on some very high-end adventure bikes, which are incredible bits of kit, all singing, all dancing, horsepower, gadgets, technology, it's all there, along with the price tag to match. So we're gonna knock it back down a peg or two now to the parallel twin middleweight adventure bike world. And in this case, Suzuki's V-Strom 800. Now the V-Strom has, it's been a store of the kind of adventure bike world for a long, long time, but it's never really had that much genuine off-road capability. Before you all get on the defensive V-Strom owners, I fully admit anything can go off-road. I would off-road a GSX-R1000 given half the chance. So it's not really about whether it can go off-road, it's more about its capability, getting over rocks, up and down boulders and slopes, and how easy it makes that. And the old V-Strom was perhaps lacking a little bit in that department. This one, this new 800, is much, much more capable. Proper off-road size wheel set, proper long travel suspension, and a decent amount of ground clearance. But how far can you push it? The sun is shining, the mountains are wet, there's only one thing we're gonna do next. Take this, get it muddy, and get it stuck. See how long that takes me. This is V-Strom Off-Road Abuse Test. So I have bought the V-Strom to my local enduro track, Enduro World, that's Silvera. I wanted to see just how far you could push it off-road and <laughs> this place is going to be perfect. It is absolute brilliant fun place to ride on an enduro bike. <laughs> it is hard on an adventure bike. So let's see how this V-Strom goes. And the, I noticed it already riding earlier, the very first thing with an adventure bike from the off-road side of things it's got to have a good riding position it, once you've got a good riding position you can kind of deal with everything else and keep yourself out of trouble but with an awkward riding position everything's harder than it needs to be but good foot brake position a little wide between the legs but that's kind of standard fare on an adventure bike but actually with the rubbers off the foot pegs are pretty grippy and the big wide set of bars give you plenty of leverage so they have got that stuff good. Next, <laughs> next thing that I think makes an adventure bike off-road worthy, being able to turn off any ABS and traction control or put them in an off-road mode, because when it gets like this, you need that bit of slip. And I have to say again, pretty simple to turn the traction control off. You can do that while you're riding along as well. ABS, you've got to be stationary to turn it off. We will not go up there today. <laughs> and again, easy, easy to do. So the ABS is off on the rear wheel only, so I've still got front ABS, but I just went down that pretty gnarly descent with no issue from the front ABS at all. I don't think we'll go up there. <laughs> I think we're gonna follow the, what they call the easy route, but it's easy, easy route for people who ride enduro on enduro bikes, not for an adventure bike on dual sport tires. <laughs> oh, icy puddles. That's good. We are getting round. <laughs> Go little V-Strom. Come on little V-Strom, up you go. <laughs> you. <laughs> Brilliant. God, this ice is treacherous. Oh my god, that's slippery. That's <laughs> literally complete ice. Whoa. <laughs> now on this bit of the track, I seem to remember there used to be loads of upside. Whoa. <laughs> there were <laughs> ups and downs. Right. Well, I guess I've got no choice. I'm going in that big lake of ice, aren't I? <sighs> or do I go across there? That doesn't look any better. Well, I'm going in. Who knows what's going to happen? 
I'm hoping my wheel breaks straight through the ice so I can actually get through here. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, that's wet and cold, isn't it? Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Imagine if you're in the middle of a big icy river and your chain came off. Off-road adventure bikes, kind of this middleweight sector particularly, you have to talk about the Yamaha Tenere in particular and the KTM 890. Now, I think here on an enduro track, the biggest restriction towards actually getting round, you know, not worried about speed or doing massive jumps, actually getting round the track, physical size, width of foot pegs, how wide it is when you get stuck in a rut. And I'm gonna say, both the other two would have a slight edge on this, but it's not a lot, it's really not a lot. <laughs> that was a good day. I have to say, I had a smile on my face from the minute we rolled into Enduro World till the minute I packed the V-Strom back up and rode home. It shouldn't be possible to ride around a gnarly Enduro track on a 230 kilo bike that's, you know, let's face it, designed for carrying luggage to the south of Europe. I was really impressed most of all with the V-Strom by how tractable and usable and forgiving it was in those conditions. As you can see in the footage, it was pretty treacherous. It was icy. Enduro was a fab place to ride around. It's a really good, fun enduro park. But when it's frozen ground, it is so treacherous. The ice was making the wheels slide everywhere. Then you'd put your foot down because the wheel was sliding and your foot would slide out as well. It was so unpredictable. And in those conditions, it would really highlight any flaws in how kind and gentle a bike can be to its rider. And that doesn't just apply to someone of my ability. It doesn't apply to world champions, it doesn't just apply to new riders, it applies to everyone. When you're at your limit, you're the edge of your comfort zone and your performance, that's where some bikes want to bite you in the backside and throw you on the floor, and other bikes actually cost at you and let you get through really well. It's something that the BMW GS, I hate mentioning that in every adventure bike review, but that bike is famously very, very good at it. It's very, very forgiving on those edge of balance situations. This V-Strom really impressed me whole day of doing stupid stuff, I did not drop it once. That should be a given, but genuinely, when you're doing this sort of off-road testing, pushing them to their limits, it's very easy to put a bike down on its side. Not once. Every time I got off balance, I had enough room, leverage, and control of the weight that I could, I could get the thing back up to the balance point and ride away. Massive tick for Suzuki there. Forget the numbers on the spec sheet, that is important. Now, in terms of the rest of the bike, again, the V-Strom I've said before, like the GSX-8S, it's kind of road bike sibling stablemate thing. On paper, it's not the best one out there. You know, it's very good value, but 230 kilos, the power's a bit down on things like the KTM. It's not the most sporty one, but I don't actually care. It just rides really nicely. And the mid-range of that motor makes firing up trails and razzing around off-road really, really enjoyable. The, the horsepower's there and the torque's there when you want it. Now, what are the limitations of this bike? You know, for me, it's never, been the out and out sports off-road bike. That's not what Suzuki wanted it to be. You know, KTM and Husqvarna and, you know, to a degree Yamaha with the Tenere have kind of pushed that end of the spectrum. The Suzuki V-Strom has never gone chasing that all out off-road performance, but it's very capable and it actually got everywhere. The things that limited it, I found, if you wanted to start going quick, I started running out of suspension travel pretty quickly. Um, bottom in the fork, bottom in the shock. Again, a little fiddle with the, the adjustment because it's got decent adjustable suspension. You could get a bit more out of that. But ultimately, the suspension travel you've got for the weight the bike is and how soft the springs are was kind of the limiting factor when you tried to go fast. In terms of tackling gnarly terrain, actually getting through stuff, I did start running out of ground clearance a couple of times. And I had to be real careful. The, the basic gear and brake levers, they're steel, so they'll bend and bend back. That's excellent. But they're not folding tips. They're not anything fancy like that. So you're a bit low in the chassis when you get into those ruts. It's very easy to catch those tips and bend them back. So if you're careful and tiptoe your way through, fine. But I'd want to try and get some folding tips and a little bit more ground clearance. 
And finally, the only physical thing about the bike, the riding position was really good. When I started getting into really tricky stuff and I wanted to slide my bum back on the seat to move my body weight around, that big stepped seat, that kind of road bike touring seat, got in the way. And I'm definitely not tall enough to sit on the pillion seat and try and get my feet to the ground. But most of those criticisms I've come up with are very much based around off-road performance. And the bottom line is this thing got through. Losing the chain was... Oh, yuck. Yeah, that was a bit of an annoying thing. And I definitely think that's more a lack of adjustment than a problem with the bike itself. But it got there, it got everywhere, and it made it as easy as possible for me to do it. That is a massive tick. It's got me thinking, this V-Strom, for me, sits kind of quite nicely in the middle of, of mid-capacity adventure bike territory. You've got Yamahas and KTMs over here doing crazy gnarly off-road stuff. And then you've got things like the F750 GS on this end doing the kind of nicer road touring oriented side of this, this market. This is the everyman bike. It kind of does everything quite well and is very capable at both ends of the spectrum. But would it be possible if you were so inclined to shove this a little bit more to the crazy end, drop some weight, wind up the off-road performance and make something that was a little bit more leery, was a little bit more suitable for living out your Dakar fantasies, but without killing its ability to chomp out big miles on the road. I feel a project bike coming on.